Next, France 24's Claire Pacalin has been working on a series of reports for us about the Second World War. This June will mark 80 years since D-Day, when Allied troops landed in Normandy and liberated France from the Nazis. Later this month, the National Remembrance Day for victims of deportations to Nazi death camps will take place as well. And Claire is with me now to tell us a bit about what she's been working on. Claire. Yes, so every year on the last Sunday of April, we have this Remembrance Day which takes place for the victims of deportation. Now, that here in France, that means 150,000 people, over half of them Jewish, but also members of the Resistance as well as people from the travellers community, mm -hmm. were deported from France to the Nazi death camps. Many of them ended up in the gas chambers of Auschwitz and, of course, never came home. And this year, though, there were lots of events going on at the moment. I've been covering some of them in the lead-up to that April 28th, that Sunday, when the official Remembrance Day takes place. Now, what's interesting is that this year there will be very few people who actually were members of the resistance or who lived through the Holocaust, who will be taking part mm. in the ceremonies because there just aren't any people left. Um, it was a long time ago. People have died. Those who are still around were children at the time. And the reports that I've been working on are really, how do we pass down the history of what happened when there are very few and soon probably no survivors or witnesses left? Um, one of the survivors, though, that we did speak to, uh, Rachel Jedinak, she's 90 years old now. She, um, both her parents were deported and killed in Auschwitz. So she was from a Polish Jewish family living in the 20th Arrondies, one in Paris. She and her sister survived. Mm -hmm. They were what's known as enfants cachés, so hidden children um, were, were taken in by mostly Christian families in different parts of France, taken in and hidden so they couldn't be arrested and deported. And she spoke to us about what it feels like to be one of the few left who can still tell their story. Nous ne sommes plus très nombreux à pouvoir témoigner. Les rangs se sont éclaircis. Nous sommes on peut nous compter sur les doigts de la main. Et donc, euh, il faut transmettre jusqu'au bout. Euh, les jeunes qui arrivent, qui ne savent rien, il faut leur expliquer ce qu'une guerre comme celle que de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale a permis de faire, de tuer des millions d'innocents. De what a powerful testimony from a survivor there, Claire. Just tell us a bit more about what happened during the Holocaust here in France. What's interesting is that in France, up until the 70s, even the 80s, the Holocaust wasn't really talked about. There was this collective and, and a political desire to move on, to put that in the past, to focus on the successes of the French resistance. Mm -hmm. And it was only really only in the last 30, 40 years that people began opening up and talking about what they live through, what their families live through, and with the goal, of course, of preventing anything like this from happening again in France. To give you an example, here in Paris, we had the, the Veldiv Roundup in July 1942. 13,000 Jewish people, mostly women and children, were round up, arrested at the crack of dawn, put inside a sports stadium for a few days, then taken to one of two camps outside Paris. The parents were separated from their children, put on trains to Auschwitz, a few weeks later, the children were put on trains to Auschwitz too. Of course, very few of them ever came home. And the horror is magnified by the fact that it was French police, of course, working under the orders of the Nazis. Mm. France, Paris, particularly Paris, was, was occupied in 1942 by the Nazis. But it was still French police working under the orders of the Nazis who carried out those arrests. So it really is a, a stain on French history. This is known as a real dark point mm. in 20th century French history. And of course, there's a desire to continue educating people. But how do you do that when there are very few people left who can tell the story? Well, tell us a bit more about that then. How do we make sure that these important stories aren't forgotten? Well, I went to... Um, efforts are being made. Mm. And I went to a, a meeting that takes place every year at a high school. It's been taking place for the last 30 years now. That's the high school. It's in the 20th arrondissement in Paris. So that's the arrondissement. That's the, the neighbourhood where a lot of Jewish families lived mm. in the 1940s. It's always been a neighbourhood where immigrants family families lived and of course in the 1940s you had jewish families who had left eastern europe from you know escaped persecution ended up in that northeast corner of paris and in this high school every year uh, a group of people who have either lived through the holocaust or who were members of the resistance come and speak to high school students and just tell them what they went through, and there's a question and answer. Now, of course, when this meeting first started up, um, you had lots of people. You had four members of the resistance who would come and speak to the high school students. Today, there are only two 
um, hidden children because all the others have gone. They've 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 died now. They 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 they're no longer there to tell the story and. I spoke to the organiser, he was a teacher at the school, he's now retired, and he said to me, he was really stressed before the meeting took place. You can see there are loads of high school students there, but he was really stressed before that they weren't going to turn up because it was a sunny afternoon, it was a Friday, um, it felt a bit like the first day of spring. He thought that the students wouldn't be interested mm -hmm. um, and he was really worried. In the end, they were interested, and, and I spoke to a couple of them, uh, I think we can play those sound bites now, telling us what it was like listening to Rachel, who we heard earlier on, tell her story and, and they were really interested and engaged. Ça permet de voir une personne qui a vécu cette période, ça permet de vraiment d'incarner euh, l'horreur qui s'est passée et ça, ça permet de d'avoir un, un véritable point de vue, une véritable histoire et ça, ça touche plus profondément je trouve. C'est plus fort, puis c'est plus précis aussi parce qu'en cours on voit ce qui s'est passé en, en général avoir un, un témoignage d'exemple de vie, c'est plus, euh, plus humain, du coup, on comprend mieux ce qui s'est passé. And Claire Pacala, I understand we can find your reporting when it comes out in full in a couple of weeks here on France 24. Thanks very much, Claire Pacala, for us there.